Hey, my name is Zeus Zapato, a writer for Healing Maps, and let's talk about psychedelic VR apps. First off, and sorry guys, I just have to get this out of the way before we can even go on. Despite what you may hear on social media and on the web, virtual reality by itself cannot induce a psychedelic trip. Let me repeat that again. Virtual reality on its own cannot manifest a psychedelic trip. Lots of VR apps have and will continue to make claims that their software can induce a psychedelic trip, but that's just marketing hype, and here's why. A psychedelic trip is marked by distinct neurological modulations in the brain, specifically distinct agonism or activation of serotonin receptors or antagonism or blockage of NMDA receptors. There may be other natural synthetic psychedelics that we'll discover in the future, but these psychedelics will have a common theme of direct activation or deactivation of neuroreceptors. Virtual reality doesn't directly activate neuroreceptors like serotonin or NMDA receptors. You could argue that virtual reality has the ability to increase dopamine in the body, which in turn would interact with dopamine receptors. But guess what? So many non-psychedelic things can turn on dopamine receptors. Being addicted to online gambling can increase dopamine. Uh, eating your favorite sugary foods can increase dopamine transmission. Listening to your Spotify playlists can also increase dopaminergic activity. None of these examples produce a psychedelic trip, just like virtual reality on its own doesn't induce a psychedelic trip. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary people, don't get bamboozled by the psychedelic VR hype. I gotta admit, it's so difficult for me to talk about psychedelic VR apps in a positive way, and that's because the science doesn't back up the extraordinary claims made by these psychedelic VR developers. I've written two articles about this topic, so if you really wanna dive deep, we'll put those two links in the description of this YouTube page. Now with all that said, I still think VR has a legit place in psychedelics, and I wanna highlight two interesting VR apps, one of which has some really interesting science behind it, and the other one is something I've never seen before. The first one is a study coming from Estonia. Uh, yes, that Estonia. Just kidding, because that's not Estonia. That's actually a silhouette of a piece of lasagna. This is Estonia, um, and you didn't even know. Shame on you. Estonian scientists Carl Kristen Kopp and Jan Aru created Cyril, a psychedelic-inspired VR experience. I know what you're thinking, here we go again, but let me just tell you how the study went. Cyril is a VR app that presents several visual audio scenarios that are modeled around elements and themes of psychedelic trips. Scenarios like being emerged in a tunnel, looking at planet Earth, or seeing an ethereal light in the distance, or floating on an endless ocean. They built 19 different scenarios which have been validated amongst psychonauts and participants of the study as similar to a psychedelic experience. But the ultimate question is, why do any of this? These Estonian scientists gathered 12 participants with mild to moderate depressive symptoms. And over the course of two days, these Cyril psychedelic model scenarios were presented to them in virtual reality. To evaluate the level of depression, the Emotional State Questionnaire, or ESQ, was given to study participants before the Cyril experience and two weeks after the VR session. And what did they find? Well, out of the 12 participants, eight of them had a decrease in depressive symptoms after the Cyril VR session. And not only that, but anxiety levels also decreased with most participants. As you know, taking psychedelics and the reduction of depression and anxiety has a strong correlation. So does that mean that Cyril has broken through the digital barrier and created a VR experience that's equivalent to a psychedelic experience? Carl and Jan have done some amazing things with this project, along with the other scientists. But these results don't support the idea that a psychedelic experience is being replicated in VR. Perhaps it's as simple as looking at some cool VR imagery can inspire some internal insight that makes you more relaxed, like how looking at leaves falling off a tree on an autumn afternoon can give you some tranquility. Pleasurable subjective experiences tend to have positive cognitive effects. That's why people that are stressed out go for a walk in the park and get their heads back on track. However, these experiences aren't psychedelic. They're just enjoyable. Perhaps just like how Cyril's VR is enjoyable and fun. 
Nevertheless, still interesting research coming from Estonia. So, the second psychedelic VR app I want to talk about is something I didn't even know existed 72 hours ago. In fact, I had to reshoot this entire episode just to include them in it because it's that interesting. This past weekend, I went to the Interdisciplinary Conference on Psychedelic Research in Harlem in the Netherlands. Yeah, Europe has a Harlem too. I ran into two scientists from Australia named, I'm about to butcher these names, but I'll try. Agnieszka Deskula and Prashnat Puspantan. They're the creators of Anchoring VR, which acts as a tool for tripping on a psychedelic. How does this work? Well, during and especially after a psychedelic experience, people may have incredible insights, both personal and about their external world. We're talking about revelations of relationships, goals, aspirations. This period of post-dose psychedelic insight is usually referred to as the glow period. However, the problem is we tend to forget these insights as our cognition slowly fades away from this glow period. What anchoring VR does is essentially create mental anchors in a VR world so that a person can not only have a place to store these ideas and memories, but also a virtualized place to recollect them. For example, let's say you're tripping and your brain is being bombarded by grandiose ideas and insights. You guys know how it is. A person can start up anchoring VR, put on the headset, and be transported to an Australian beach with floating gyms in front of them. Each gym can be grabbed and a person can record a message and store it inside of a gym. These gyms can then be placed in a chest, stored for later use. You can even conceptualize things you don't like about yourself or your life and throw it into a virtual fire and watch as it burns away. The therapeutic applications Anchoring VR has seems endless. And I can imagine while under psychedelics, an app like this can have great potential. But once again, it's still early in the psychedelic VR scene. And what if putting on a VR headset while tripping is just too bothersome? I mean, to calibrate and tighten a headset is already annoying without the psychedelics. There you go, another voyage down the vortex of psychedelic VR apps. You guys love when I talk about this stuff, probably because I'm so critical of it. Well, hopefully in the future, our technological limitations won't prevent the potential benefits VR has for the psychedelic experience. However, I still stand by what I said earlier. Don't get bamboozled by the psychedelic VR hype.